Welcome, welcome, welcome to Queer Conversations. I'm your host, G of Verity TV, and this is a weekly series every single Tuesday at 6 p.m. EST, and I am highlighting, amplifying the LGBT voices and visibility in our community. My guest today, Tabitha Mudra. Hi. Tabitha is a filmmaker and the director of the 1310 Bandits. That's what she said. Yes, yes. Um, so, Tabitha. Tell me. Tell me, first of all, what's the 1310 Bandits? We're saying you're the d director of it, but what is it? Okay. For people, I mean, and first of all, let me just, before I let you continue, mm -hmm. and you haven't even started, sorry, but <laughs> you'll get there. Um, I want to thank everyone for joining. Ask people to like this page, Vera GTV, and ask questions. We're here for 30 minutes. You can ask Tabitha anything. You can ask me anything. You can ask me anything as well. So let's talk about getting started with what's the 1310 Bandits? Mm. So they're kind of rebel resource, female-led filmmaking team here based in Broward. But of course, mm -hmm. we, we, can, we can go worldwide if you want. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's it. We're, we're pioneering only socially conscious stories, which brings me to something I saw in, I believe, the Sun Sentinel about there's a lot of bad news out there. So mm -hmm. it's great mm -hmm. that you're celebrating artists, that you're, you're saying publicly, hey, we're hearing a lot. And how can we, you know, celebrate these other small stories, these stories of consciousness and understanding as well? And so we infiltrate that in film. And how did the Thirteen Ten Bandits get started? So, so the the the, the, <laughs> the truest, bluest story is someone who is hiding in the room tagged me on um, near my birthday on this extravaganza okay. called the Forty Eight our film festival yes. and yeah. you essentially make a film with a lot of other filmmakers very cool in 48 hours okay great so um i know that with your team 1310 balance which eventually i became a part of mm -hmm. thank you um sweat like all these awards at first year and won right mm -hmm. and then you won again the next year yes mm -hmm. yeah Mm -hmm. And then at some point, you end up doing a feature film. Mm -hmm. and, and at some point, uh, am I in the film? <laughs> <laughs> I'm psychic. <laughs> well, yes, yes, uh, you are. Actually, you're, uh, dapper as can be, exactly you, like this. Yes, yes, thank as you. As your character was. Okay, great, yeah. great. That was a great experience. And how has this whole experience been for you? You know, it's, it's hyper speed cinema. So. Just consider everything that co can go wrong will, mm -hmm. and everything that can go magic will. So you're you're completely shoved into a, a crazy hyperspeed box, mm -hmm. and you're told think outside of it. And that is probably the coolest talent that we've enormously cultivated over the past three and a half years as a team. Amazing, because before before the balance, you were not a filmmaker, right? You were. Uh, Photographer. photographer, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, and so you evolved right into this filmmaker world. Well, it's, it's brilliant because stills, as we all know, take very little time to acknowledge. Okay. It's like, oh, I saw it. I can love it. It takes, doop. but video films, it's more of an investment, and there's also a lot more people and time and energy that go into it. So, not to say I'll ever be bored of stills. Right. It's like my mm -hmm. first love. Mm -hmm. Um, but there's some, there was something at the time missing for me and, and challenging that, that conversation. Right. So yeah, I love it. Absolutely love it. So I want to just greet the audience. We have some people here who've tuned in. Thank you for tuning in. Please share the video. We have today Tabitha Mudra, who is a filmmaker and director of 3010 Bandits. And let's ask her. Cheers, queers. Yes. I was just going to, oh man, just going to, oh, cheers. <laughs> no, that's fine. I was just going to say, let's ask her. How do, you, how do you identify? Because oh. you're on Queer Conversations, I always want to ask people how do they identify. Um, well, cheers. Man. Cheers. Mm -hmm. This is an uh, IPA. And this is a AGUA. <laughs> and, and what brings me to that is India Pale Ale. And then there's LGBTQQIAAP. And you are? <laughs> all of that? So I, I want to represent all of that so I understand queer is the umbrella, but right. underneath of that I 
totally identify with the air. Lesbian in the house. Come, come. <laughs> yes, I love that. I love that. I love all the different identities. And what about for, um, you know, for gender and so on? Like, how do you identify? So people say femme, stud, gender queer. I would say I'm like a chapstick femme. Chapstick. I love that. Yeah, chapstick. you're not going to catch me in not heels. Quite, not quite lipstick. I'm not going to. Okay. But, but I, I can doll up and I can doll down. Okay, great. So great. I like dapper, but it always looks a little more... Femme, femme, it does. Femme. It looks like yeah, sexy, but I like, sexy. I like, I like. Thank yeah. you, thank you. I gotta tell you, I knew like when I was wearing black today that it would kind of match you because I usually wear like blues, a lot of blues and maybe orange and different colors. But as I said, Tabitha definitely, definitely has uh, black on today. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, let me you know, do some little you know matching up with you. So, yeah, so that's great. And let me shout out, the, I see uh, Nikki Lopez Creative who's doing our um, production here and she's putting in the link. So follow the 1310 Bandits and there's, she put in the Instagram page, a Facebook page and um, we have a question. And there's a question. What's the question? Thank you. She want, he wants to know more about Tabitha. That's the question. Yes. So we know that, first of all, she's queer. She's a chapstick. Uh, chapstick lesbian. <laughs> yeah, well, and yeah. then so... Um, how about like, are you single? Are you in a relationship? You know? Well, let me tell you. If I swiped right on your life, check your Tinder. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're, in the, you're in the swipe mode. Where I'm at is I'm really in the, in the script mode. I'm dating a script right now. Okay. And it takes a lot of time. And sometimes I that's mm -hmm. a little difficult being in production. I've, I've, let's say I've dated out of production, but mostly in production because they understand mm -hmm. sort of the mindset and the lifestyle. It's a little bombastic. So what are you working on now? Do you really want to know? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, we all want to know. Well, it, I think we, have, we were touching a little bit before is that we went into the 48 hours. We did three of them, mm -hmm. successfully took home 21 awards. Wow, 21? Yeah. Wow, congrats. Yeah. Yeah. And then we got asked to do the 48 day, which is just an, ins an insane process. Mm -hmm. And, and I'm a little on the type A side, I, I guess, you know, I, I kinda... know, but I've noticed everything is, a, this is, by the way, this is Tabitha's studio here and everything is like pretty matched up and perfect. So yeah, uh, I remember the first time I came to your apartment and I went in your bathroom and I saw like everything shelves, like you put in, it was just like perfectly lined up and everything is just like, Perfectly, <laughs> very it's, organized. The, the, the bathroom is a lot like my mind. If I can put the thoughts and the things that people are going to need out there, mm -hmm. then I don't get asked as many questions. Okay, good. Yes, yes. So you're very efficient. Yeah. Yeah, I noticed if I that. Just think, <laughs> think a little, save a lot. Okay. Um, I have. I hear. What is a qu couple of questions here? We're getting quite a few. Thank you for the questions. Keep asking the questions. What informs your creativity? What inspires you, Tabitha? This is good. Okay. Okay. So this goes into like everything and in, it's inclusion because all of our ideas are really swimming around the room all the time however I look at experiences I've had where people seem or are very much noticeably voiceless or powerless in a situation mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and using this this tool of photography and film you can really get concepts out there to either promote conversation um, compassion Etc. Right. So, what what informs me specifically? I can give you. Uh, I remember being in a restroom, um, North Florida, on okay. a road trip, and I walked in, and there was a uh, genderless, non-binary female, mm -hmm. and there was a an older woman and a young girl who had walked in, and and she was like, she grabs the young girl. Oh Lord. <laughs> I don't. Did we come in the wrong restroom? And I'm like standing there and I'm like, no, you didn't. Mm -hmm. What are you? And she's like, this must be the men's restaurant. I'm like, no, <laughs> you didn't. You know, like yeah. this, this, this female who was dressed in a, I guess, it, you know, just a tank top and, and some board shorts. Right. There was nothing, ugh, you yeah. know? I experienced that so all the time. This is, so I know. this is the androgyny aspect. Yeah. 
mm -hmm. of, of our world where is that a, is that yeah. a boy or a girl? What is that? Is that Who a man is it? or a yeah. woman? Is that a but, da, 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 da. but don't call it out. It's not a public discussion for you be. and you know, you could go up and or you could Yeah. She she let the person be. <laughs> she wasn't in an unsafe space. Right. There right. were tons of people. It was like a whole rest area. So that informs a lot of the decisions that are being made creatively. Mm. One tiny example. There's mm -hmm. so many. Mm, I love that. Well, let me tell you, um, you have a unique story. All of us have these you know, unique, unique stories, but you have a particular unique story because you grew up in foster care, right? In, right here in the United States? Mm -hmm. Right. And um, I wonder how does that impact your work? Like, does it impact your work? Oh, I and think... How, I, if, if it yeah. does, how does it? <laughs> so that would be the champion championing the underdog. I love underdog stories because everyone feels a little alienated. Mm -hmm. um, however, you know, a young time story, I remember going to a friend's house and she had all these things, like all the cupboards were full, she mm. had a ton of clothes, everything was exactly as it needed to be, like I saw in the movies. Mm. I was like, oh shit, girl! <laughs> this is like, oh, you can wear a Sunday's best every damn day. And so it was very neat, and that's when I started seeing that, oh, my life is a little, a little different. A little different. Okay, mm -hmm. now I have some juxtaposition. And um, take me back to the original question. I was saying, like, how does, how, how does growing up in foster care, like, impact your work? You know, like, it's, and you got into, like, going into someone's household and seeing, like, yeah. this. And it's funny enough, I grew up very middle class, so the, the household you described is, like, my childhood. You know, where everything that I needed was provided. I had piano lessons, I had tennis lessons, and, you know, all this stuff was, you know, I had vacations. I grew up like that. You know, yeah. when you're saying, like, go you're to set, dinner. Yeah, go, yeah, go <laughs> to... Regular in, shit. In Jamaica, was Chinese restaurants was a big deal to go to a Chinese restaurant. So it was, I don't know, it was pretty cool because I don't know the difference because how I grew up was how I grew, grew up. up. Right, that's your normal. So, yeah. um, and that's what's been informing some, some of the newest story, which is like, okay, when do we figure out that we're very different and how do we start finding similarities with others? Because mm -hmm. nobody wants to feel alone. Mm -hmm. um, and understanding your psychology and just, just digging deeper. But as a young person, it takes something. You know you're not like them, but mm -hmm. you can't quite gauge why. Mm -hmm. And what about any of your film work? Does it tie into... Like, are you going to do a story, for example, about... Because, like, I know for myself, like, I'm working on my memoirs. I want to share my story. Do you feel like you want to share your life story? I know for a fact I have to. You have to. Mm -hmm. Why do you have to? I have to. Because when I think about it, I say to myself, if I, there's no one else in the world who can do it. Mm -hmm. right, so exactly. it's the one story that I can completely write what I know, the honest truth, and then see what happens. Mm. You know, do people relate or do they not? So it's a little bit, it's dramatic. Of Coming of age, action, adventure, get ready! Everything. Um, thank you for joining. I see a lot of people here. I see Minnie, I see PJ, some Hi. names of Hey, thank you. You recognize Tabitha Mudra from the 1310 Bandits. Um, and there's just so much going on. I have to also acknowledge you and I say, okay, David is saying, great. studio looks great. Thank you for hosting us today. <laughs> We're in her studio apartment here. And... Um, I see also about two weeks ago, we got some great news that you were acknowledged by the SFGN, that's the South Florida Gay News, as one of the, <laughs> <laughs> as one of the um, top 50. Out, out 50. Out 50. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 and why, how, why did they select you? Let, let's, I mean, I know, but let's tell the audience. So, I mean, there's a, my, my giant life-size head is in there on page seven. Do we have and a physical paper? I, saw I it do. Something. It's actually um, David. No. No. Okay. It is, but it's in the spare room on the black and white. Okay, pictures. so we'll get this to show the physical so, paper. So, you, yeah, go ahead. Anyhow, it just says filmmaker, some other shenanigans, but what, what ties us into the LGBT, and I say us because I, I'm, I could never do this type of teamwork alone. Mm -hmm. So, it's that we pay attention to the Bechdel test and Vito Russo. Bechdel being... Yeah, please tell us, because I'm like, I... I I'm familiar with it, yeah. but tell, tell the audience like exactly what that means. Um, it's a simple test with three criteria. It has to have at least two women in it. Some say they have to be named. They must talk to each other about something other than a man. Hmm. That's it. 
That's all you have to do to pass to it. To pass that test. So now the ridiculous part is there's not a lot of movies that pass That's it. That's crazy. So, and just think about it, even some of your favorite, funniest, like, rom-coms, you name it, all the women are talking to each other about what? <laughs> A girl? What are they talking about? Isn't <laughs> yeah. it something? So, yeah. um, and then when we go into action-adventure, or major action, it's a love story. Right. Everything is them discussing how they're going to get to the the end to, to the happily ever after mm -hmm. and um and even you you know here it's like you, you ask everyone about their dating life mm -hmm. because we're genuinely concerned we're, we're being spoon-fed that that's what we're supposed to be concerned about yeah. um so it's, it's a very cool thing uh, so that's Bechdel test oh uh -huh. and then yeah. there's Vito Russo what's, what's that tell us a little bit about what that so is so that is giving um a substantial role to someone who has it in the LGBTQ um, grouping that if we took their sexuality away, it would change the movie completely. That the sexuality matters mm. inside of the film. Okay. Not just the token gay, token right, black, right, token right. token to that we actually have Substance. a substance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like mm -hmm. a nice character that LGBTQ people can relate to that they can see themselves in. So we do that, don't we? Yes. Ah. Let me tell you, Calabatina, Calabatina, which is a feature film. Um, I would say when I watched it, I was part of it. But you know, when you're part of a film, it doesn't mean that you've seen all of it. Mm -hmm. So when I sat and watched it, I was thinking like, I don't think I've seen a film that has had so much diversity in terms of black folks, meaning like shades and hair textures and not just black folks, but people who have like other people of color, but just to see like, there's a standard of beauty lots of times in, in the, you probably heard in the black community. And it's usually someone who's not so dark and whose hair is mm -hmm. not so kinky. Mm -hmm. And I saw like every shade of black, uh, different hair textures, different heights, different style, different gender expressions, identities. And I just was like, wow. I mean, we all happen to be pretty good looking. <laughs> but, yeah. you know, overall, you know, I just was like, look at this film. You know, I just felt like this, this visually, you know, it just was like so like affirming. You know, it's a great story, Aww. of course. But yeah, it really was. Wow. So here it is, yeah. That's a hell of a testimonial. Yeah, You're yeah. Here first, no. So here is the, in case you didn't see it, we're gonna block her face for a second. <laughs> My giant head. So her giant head, where she got acknowledged by the South Florida Gay News. And how was that, how was that for you? How do you feel about that when you got it? Were you like, surprised, did you know it was coming? You know, well, they had sent me an, uh, an email, and what I understand is you get nominated. You don't know who nominates okay. you. Okay. And they send in a little blurb on, you know, mm -hmm. why, why you deserve, and, and then boom, voila. Yes. And then here is Millie saying the Latinx community, too. It was very much acknowledged in that film and a part of it. Millie was doing, like, makeup, and we got so much people in the film. We got Latin Negras, Latin X, like everybody in, in there. In front of and behind the camera. Yeah, everywhere. Yeah, that, that was, was great. Really, that was really, really nice. Oh, oh man. Sorry. <laughs> there is, okay, there is a cat trying to get on set. And I like animals from afar. <laughs> yeah, she's, she calls it a, I don't know if I can say it. On your channel? No, I'm joking. Of course I can say pussy. I, I won't get like Grace Jones in Boomerang. I don't know if you remember that movie. Right? I think she was like, pussy, 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 pussy. Yes. Yeah, I can say pussy. Yeah, yes. it's fine. It's yes. fine. You can channel your There was years where I didn't want to say it. And then in the past probably 10 years, I feel really good about, you know, saying whatever I want to say. Yeah. Uh, okay, so David is saying, enjoy the film, especially amazing because of the restrictions on the time to make the film. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so 1310 Bandits, follow 1310 Bandits. Follow, you want people to follow Time with the Mojo? You want people to follow you? Are you on your Instagram? Why you not? Know, Why gonna, not? Yeah, I'm going to be a little more fresh and hopping on there here soon, but 1310 Bandits it keeps Oh, man. Up oh, man. I don't want it to touch me. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, the cat's black and white also matches in the core. <laughs> It's no, let me tell you this. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> Both of them are alley cats. Oh man. Now did I keep them because they were black and white? Probably. They just ended up blending in, and I forgot they were here all together. Okay. <laughs> so, that's the pussy. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Can't just what's, have one. What's next with Tabitha? What's next with the thirteen ten bandits? A uh, great question. So we have we have a lot of things rolling out. We have community projects, and then we have our next feature film, which is in pre-production. Well, it's really in writing, and then proof of concept in case there's some film watchers. Okay. Uh, 
So, well, next is April 29th. It's okay. such a heavy hitting day. Okay, April 29th. Yes. If you're uh, in Fort Lauderdale, for people in Fort Lauderdale. Well, try counting. Try sure. counting. Well, meaning people who can come to Fort Lauderdale. Yeah. Well, you can live anywhere. We've had a you so can live anywhere. That's a great point. Yeah, you can live. You can have... fly into Fort Lauderdale Airport and attend. We right. did have a couple people who fly did that. In. That's yeah. wonderful. So, um, we'll be doing a massive workshop. This is the second part to the Write On workshop, which okay. was from script to screen. Okay. And so now this is called Team the Dream. Team the Dream. So. If you can believe it, so if you have an idea for a film, not just any old idea, if you can dream it, you can team it. Okay. So we'll go through like a scene it moment, everything's it. You'll script it, you'll block it, you'll light it, you'll shoot it, you'll review it. it. So it's, uh, it's so hands on and, and creative and inspiring. Okay. Uh, and then right after that, we'll have a networker. And then right after that da -da -da -da, is the battle of the sexes. Film fest. Wow, so this is a what? This hold this on, is this is a long day. day. This is a long day. This what time does it start? So we start at one and we end at eight. Okay, this is a whole day, mm -hmm. right? This is like a course, yes. Yeah. So, okay, so uh, so it starts off with what to say it again? Um, the the workshop, workshop, workshop one to five, one to five, mm hmm. Okay, and, and so, what's happening during that time? So that's where it, you come with your idea, but you really want to understand how to produce, how to hyperspeed, how to push your idea along and, okay. and put everything in place so it actually happens. Mm -hmm. We want film to happen here yes. in Broward and we nice. want to be a part of it and we want to support you with our resources, your resources. When we put them all together, we're stronger. Okay, mm -hmm. so... One to five, and then what happens after that? A networker. <laughs> networker. So, so everyone was asking for a networker. They, they want to like they want meet to, and greet and yeah, like build, right? They want to see because yeah. we, we have now just such a spider web of creativity mm -hmm. that we want to get them all in one right. spot. Okay. And then we'll go into the battle of the sexes, which will after be. After the network? Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. Okay. We'll just. Good. I love this. Right sounds great. In. Sounds fabulous. Yeah. So this is April 29th. This is an art serving Fort Lauderdale, yes. and anybody can attend. Anybody. Plan and the day with a thirty ten band. Right. So it's like plan the, to spend the day, get to know you guys, date, get to get a date us all day. Date us all day. Mm -hmm. Okay, I like that. And I'll I think be there. I think that uh, is that the link there? That's there. It's a long link. Yeah. Uh, so any more questions? I see. Um, you know, it goes pretty quickly here, so you guys can tell us if there's any questions. Yeah. Um, did you ask what's next? Is yeah, I think we. Would, she know? talked about the the workshops coming up. Um, and your film, you're working on a, this is a we feature have, we film. We have a huge, yeah, a and I would film. just really like to say that the big goal for Pitbulls and Piranhas is to, we go into proof of concept for anyone who's not familiar with that term, it's once you've written um, and you've locked in a part of your script, you shoot your, your concept, mm -hmm. then you go after funding. The funding. Funding. How's that? How's that part? So that part's a lot of things. Mm -hmm. um, just consider. So you've got your crowdsourcing, you have your big uh, executive bank types. Okay. You have match grants. Okay. A you lot have, of grant writing. Yeah. Lots Let's show them the Broward County Cultural Division. I know you guys got a mm -hmm. grant from them. So two I, grants two from grants, yes. Broward Cultural. And they've given the Art Woman money. Shout out, you know, for that as well. Mm -hmm. Yes. Keep so, the community. Yes, yes, yes. So go ahead. So you have grants, corporate. And then private. For, private, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, and do you want people to, who are watching this country to anything? Do you have? Well, them? absolutely. We don't yeah. have it up yet, but our next big push is going to be June 10th during Pride Month. Okay. Um, Women in Network and SunServe are graciously giving us Sunshine Cathedral okay. at, to show Cali Matina oh, wonderful. Wonderful. during Pride. Um, as as a, a real tribute to you know the, a lot of the things that are going on that are a little harder to talk about, and um, and then we'll do a big we'll we'll do a big share about what we're up to next. I think by June tenth we'll be finally ready. Okay, that sounds good. That sounds mm -hmm. good. Um, so I see some more questions here, and thanks everyone for joining. Someone Please share. Uh, what's Battle of the Sexes? Food fight. I know, right? We'll get. We're gonna answer that. Just wanna just thank everybody for joining. Yes. Ask people to share this. This for people who join late. Like, what are we doing? This is queer conversations. I'm G, your host of Virgie TV. This is my guest today, Tabitha Mudra. She's been talking a lot about film because she is a filmmaker, and she's a director of the Thirteen Ten Bandit Film Team, which is a primarily female mm -hmm. film team too. Which is like that's unique as well. A lot of women are not in film, right? And yeah, especially leading, leading, yeah. right? So yes. 
So what is the battle of the sexes? We just want a clarification. What's really happening in that? So we want to lift both genders up, of course. Um, this, this last one, we had I Heart film over the uh, Valentine's Day okay, cute. weekend. And we got a lot of submissions, but some of them didn't totally work for the love okay. interest. However, they had crazy cool concepts for leading females and marvelous leading men. So then it was like, oh, let's do a battle of the sexes. Let's do three teams versus three teams, male, female, and then do audience choice. And we have three amazing judges. Um, they're in the event brights, if you want to know, because they are people to know, because we know people want to share our people. So we want to get your films in front of them. And of course, we want to see them too. We want to celebrate you, uh, uh, no matter what's between your legs. I want to say, what about people who are neither male or female? Because we got people that are yeah, in the community. Yeah, let's go ahead and just, we will absolutely Because it's like we got a lot of other, yeah, we got. We will, the whole gamut. <laughs> right. We're so, making room. It's a rain. Good, good, good. Yes. And I shout out my pal Nick there, so I think he has joined as well. Yeah, how are we looking on time, team? How are we looking? Four minutes. Four minutes. Four minutes. Anything else you want to share? I got some questions for you to wrap it up. Anything else you want to share? We shared about 3010 Bandits, about your upcoming um, workshop. Anything else before? Okay, you ready? <laughs> okay, we got something else before we get started. No, it's not a hard. It's okay. not a hard. It's not a hard. Okay, we got another question here. Okay, what's another question? Well, I was asking. Yeah, go ahead, ask it. Cause I, I don't know. You can just transition into pit bulls and piranhas. And okay, because it, it, it scrolls so quickly, I can't see oh, the sure, stuff. Sure. But, but, but what is that? What is like, pit bull and piranhas? Yeah, we don't know. Sure, if I can uh, just give you a quick go log for line. It. Tell us about it. So the log line. And this is a feature film. That this you're is a feature film, right. absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, story by me, and it's being written by Ruben. Okay. And Right now, yeah, so a, a while ago, I think like six months ago, I wrote the log line and started chunking out scenes. What's a log line? A log line is a thing on Netflix or Amazon. It's that one boring sentence, like you're like, what? What is this? And it tells you a little bit about the movie. Uh, let's see if this is a good one for you. Right. An imaginative girl mm -hmm. escapes the horrors of her reality with her unlawful father's prized pit bull. An action adventure coming of age story. Sounds good. I love coming of age stories. So like that's gonna capture me too, you know. And uh, what's the first thing you said? Was it adventurous girl? Mm -hmm, Cause so she's that, imaginative. So yeah, something like it's like, you know, when when life tends to just like hit you, and you're like, can I just take a nap? Even though you have like ten thousand things you mm -hmm. should be dealing with. So as a child, when that happens, you tend to go into yeah. your imagination and you can create a, a wonderland when things aren't so wonderful right I love that and what age group will you be in it like you're gonna be 13 years old 10 years old 15 she, years old she will be aging from um, 6 oh, beautiful to 17 okay so and the transitions mm. if I may yes. are gonna be so cool because think about we all have to eat right so and, <laughs> yeah. and food is always there but the tables will change her hands will change mm -hmm. when she's you know, going through different stages, you'll notice the mm. jewelry, the fingernail polish, etc., etc. Each time she sits down to have mm. spaghetti and meatballs, a lot because, of spaghetti. yeah, because that's like the number one thing, and it's a trope in film, and I think it's funny. Okay. Don't hold me to it. I don't know if I'll keep it, but okay. You know who's gonna act? Who's gonna act time with us? No. Uh, so I've met now three young people. Okay. Um, and and I really like them, but we'll, you know, we'll see. We'll see. Okay. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for being on Queer Conversations. Mm -hmm. Thank you for joining us every Tuesday, 6 p.m. EST. Okay, some is closing, what I call Queer Conversation Closing Questions. One of them was answered already, so I'm not going to ask that Are one. Are they rapid fire? <laughs> well, this is very simple, very easy. Um, so let's see. What is Q times T squared cubed? No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> I just like, I don't even know if that's math. So you said rapid fire. Okay, so what makes you laugh? I think watching cat videos. Oh, okay. That's what makes you laugh. That's cool. Um, even though you have 12 cats? <laughs> Two. Okay. Don't get scared, ladies. I know, right? No. Three. Oh my gosh. Two. I know, right? Two, three. Yes, three. Um, all black and white? <laughs> Unshaped. Okay. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> 
On that note, what's sexy? <laughs> Ooh, you know what the sexiest thing to me is? Mm. When someone is concentrating on a passion. Mm, I like that. I like that. Mm, it's just yeah. because I'm sapiosexual, so if you are smart, <laughs> you know, you just, and then you do your thing. I want to see you do your thing. I want to keep supporting you doing your wow. thing. Wow, look at her face, you know? right? Look at his face as he's telling you, like, mm, sapiosexual, what's that? That you're in love with the mind. Mm -hmm. Your body can be good, everything can be great, but, but if you... All about the mind. Yeah, if, yeah. I can, if you get me and I can get you, and... Mm, I love it. I love it. Look at you. Look at you, Tabitha. Okay. Last, what's the best thing about being queer? I don't feel like I'm missing out. Mm. Yeah. So I think prior to when I was questioning, mm -hmm. I was like, if I go here, I don't know. I might be missing out over here. But there'd be a whole bigger pool. Like if I could open up to the B or the S. Ah, sorry, I did not mean for it to be BS. Yes, no. <laughs> <laughs> that was no, that meant to unintended. Be. That uh, <laughs> unshaved <laughs> sexual. Sexual. <laughs> yeah. hey, Great, great job catching that. Name. I know, right? Um, <laughs> but you know, you feel like you you're a little bit limited. But really, it's just that the universe narrowed it down hmm. to. And again, like the connection of the mind, I've never felt some connection, even though none of them have necessarily worked. <laughs> I've never felt that kind of connection mm. um, it, with an opposite gender. Mm. Okay. Not to say I don't have great guy friends right, or right, right. great closeness to them. Right. There's something. Okay. <laughs> I know. <laughs> maybe it's just the whole package, you know? Maybe it's just the whole package. Um, you got me cracking up over here. Your expression, she said, there's something okay. about the ladies. <laughs> and on that note, I'm going to tell you, such a pleasure to have you on time with Abudra. Absolutely. Yes. Anytime. Oh, yes. So we'll do this again next week. But no. <laughs> we'll bring you back someday. No, I love it. Absolutely. Yeah, great. So follow 1310 Bandits. Follow Tabitha. Go to the workshop on the 29th. Give them money when they ask for money. Watch the film when we show the films. And tune in every single Tuesday right here at Verge TV. Please like the page and tune in to Queer Conversations. Thank you. Bye.